Hi, my name is Adrian Walujo. I'm a designer and illustrator. I work with brand, um, agency, studios, and one of my most used mediums is factor illustration and artwork. And today in this video, I'll share with you what it is and also a little tutorial on how you can start creating your own factor artwork. So let's dive right in. Factor artwork is art that's made up of factor graphics. These graphics are points, lines, curves, and shapes that are based on mathematical formulas. When you scale a factor image file, it is in low resolution and there is no loss of quality, so it can be sized to however large or small you need it to be. In comparison, raster art is created using colorized pixels. When you enlarge your raster file with pixel-based art too much, the edges look jagged and the quality is lost. Due to the need for art that prints at multiple sizes and responsive web designs adapting to different screen sizes, factor files are a necessity of modern design. Factor art is usually an individual factor image and not an entire design. They can stand alone or can be added into another design. Factor design, however, will consider overall composition when they create advertisement, websites, or anything else that features careful organization of text, graphics, and other structural elements. For the first step, I always plan my assets in my sketchbook, so I'll have an idea of what the final design will look like. I'll then import this sketch and use them as a reference for illustrating in Adobe Illustrator. Lock the layer for the reference sketch. Then I'll start by blocking the big shapes that makes the character. I use the rectangle tool, the circle tool, the pen tool, and manipulate them to follow the design that I have done in the sketch. It's easier to work from existing shapes, rather than using pen tool to trace all the curves and shapes. And if it's a symmetrical element, like the ear or the eye, I just make one of them, and I will duplicate them later, so I don't have to make them twice. I'm working on this piece using the desktop version of Illustrator, but Adobe Illustrator is now available on iPad too. So if you have an iPad, you may want to try the iPad version, as you may find it easier and more natural to block the shapes using the Apple Pencil. Now that you are done blocking most of the shapes of the character, we'll be moving on to adding some colors. I usually start with the color of the skin as the reference point, and I tend to choose a warmer color because it gives a sense of freshness and life to it. The second color I build upon is the hair and the eye colors. I will choose a darker, warmer color so it is a reddish brown shade. I try to avoid using pure colors like a pure white, a pure black, because in reality you rarely come across something that is just purely one hue. For instance, when you are under the sun, the tone tends to be warmer, and in winter, the color tone is cooler so it is a bit bluish, and you would want to reflect that mood when choosing your color for your illustration. Remember my tip earlier? I duplicated the arm and the shoulder here using command D, and then I'll flip the shape horizontally to use it on the other side of the body. Now that I have most of the bigger part done, I will spend more time on the smaller details, so things like the eyelashes and the details that you will find in her clothing. It's easier to work from the bigger shapes and then you work onto the details. Another good tip when starting out is also to limit your palette, so you can ensure that all the shades are harmonious rather than clashing with one another. But of course, there's a lot of trial and error, so you just try and experiment which color works. Or if not, you can also work from a set of color palette from a palette generator you can find online. So there you go, from sketch to a finished factor artwork. 
By repeating the same process, you can create more elements to build your scene. From the sketch I shared earlier, I continued working on other things like the cafe, the cat, the food, and then at the end I can assemble them. It's quite similar to like playing a game. So that's it for our video today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Keep on creating and I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.